when I was growing up as a kid I was really really fortunate living in Sheffield because we had a couple of stunning reservoirs really close to home and one of them I actually used to travel to actually on the bus however this one is a little bit further away this is Underbank Reservoir it's a fantastic place to spend the day I've got a feeling I might be the only person fishing here today believe it or not it's a stunning place the water levels are very very high so I'm not quite sure where to fish I'm just in front of the Adventure Centre that's behind me and whilst it looks really really nice here to fish I'm not actually gonna fish just here just in case they decide there are gonna be some activities on here but I've got a feeling whilst the water level is so high that restricts a lot of the places where you can fish because as you can see the water levels right up to the trees so it does mean that most of the reservoir isn't actually fishable you just can't get in however a little bit further up to the left where it goes up towards the neck end I'm pretty sure there's gonna be a few spots so I'm just gonna get my barrel loaded up and um, we'll have a wander up there and I'm sure we can find a nice spot there out of the wind where I'm sure it's gonna be really nice and quiet and hopefully there's gonna be a few fish there made to measure just Let's see what it's like just down here Looks like there's a bit of a path. Looks like it's uh, cut out here. I think there are two or three spots just here. Yeah, there we go, we can get in there. I think for well, the next one, let's have a look at it. There we go. Beautiful. I spent quite a lot of time recently on commercials, practicing for events, fishing events. And you know, it's quite easy to forget what it's like to come and fish venues like this it's so so quiet all you can hear is the birds whistling it's just a completely different a different pace this looks a lovely spot i haven't got any trees above us got a bit of weed close in but i have got a weed cutter with me so i can cut a hole out i'm not going to go wading out there today today is about just kind of the mission for today is to find out if there are any fish feeding out there i've got quite a lot of videos to do covering lots of different things lots of fishing basics lots of different tactics lots of different methods and I need a venue close by because things have changed a little bit at home I you know I need to be at home a little bit um, more often now so if I can find a venue close to home where there are some fish feeding then this is going to be ideal so I'm hoping there's gonna be some fish out there I'm hoping they're gonna be feeding so I think I'm gonna drop in there I can cut some of that weed bite just so it's nice and clean to fish a to fish a feeder and uh, yeah, I'm really, really looking forward to this. I'm going to chop some corn as well. I'm a massive believer in this. Just gives your ground bait some nice flecks of colour and you can actually fish with them on the hook as well if you want I just think it's great a great way of putting something in for the fish to graze over this cutter's ideal that's taken a few seconds this one's been brilliant good thing as well is with this one it actually comes with spare blades as well and I use this for chopping my worms as well when I'm chopping you know in any sort of a quantity if anyone's interested I'll put a link to this product in the description for you One thing a few people have asked me about recently is I've been using this extendable side tray but with the three points away from me basically the reason for that is because there's a great little advantage that once this is on like so by using both those two points there once that's on this third one here it's got a self-supporting arm under there which means it's going to support this tray but that fits my bait brolly so it means i don't have to carry another arm for my bait brolly it just goes in there if that rain comes because it is forecast these have been bagged down for i think these have been bagged down for two days 
these have been back down for three or four days so just open them up I'm sure they'll come round over the next hour or two this is where the five and a half meter winding net handle comes in handy I should just be able to trim some of them weeds out of the way before we get fishing well that sun's trying to break through let's hope that rain's going to hold off today is just to get a feel for if there are any fish feeding out there it's absolutely beautiful just sitting here i'll be honest all i've done is really nice simple approach i'm not going to go into too many technical things that's not what today's about i've just found a spot at 35 meters now the bait tray is really simple i've got a lot more bait than i normally would have i've just got these here because they've been bagged up in the fridge and i just thought it's just as easy to bring them with me open them up and let the air get to them it's just one less job to do when i get home so i've got the ground bait you've seen the mix i've got some normal maggots there coming around now i've got some pinkies a lot more maggots there and then these are pinkies as well they're fluoro pinkies they're slowly coming around as well got some worms i'm not going to put worm in at the start but i have got it as an option i can obviously try it on the hook as well so i'm not going to feed worms at the start and i've got the chopped corn uh, and that is breakfast it's just going to be a nice relaxing day i'm going to stay quite active i'm going to butt rest it as well so i'm not going to have the rod on the knee as though it's a, a world championship i'm just going to fish and enjoy the session and find out if there's some fish out there so i'm going to butt rest the rod fishing with braid direct what i'm going to do is i'm just going to put a couple of really lightly squeezed feeder fulls out there just to uh, get something out there because there's no reason why the fish would be on these pegs because there's so few people fish it there we go and for those interested we've got a count out there with a bomb of about I think it's about six seconds so that's one that's hit the bottom already so it's not very deep and then i'm just going to put one in now with a few pinkies and a few maggots and that's it i'm just going to put an up length on i'm going to fish uh, um, a 0 13 up length i think which breaks at about four pound i'm going to kick off with a 14 nice and positive so i'm just going to put a few pinkies in there let's put some of these nice bright fluoros in there shall we and then a few maggots and that's all i'm going to put in at the start because I'm going to be going straight on this we kick off with, I don't know, probably start with three pinkies I think three fluoro pinkies, nice bright bait 75 centimetre hook length and just see how we go from there that's it so I'll just get that one a few seconds to empty on the bottom and then I'll get an hook length on and we'll find out if there's any fish out there I haven't seen any fish topping or anything like that it's much nicer with that sun out all I can hear are birds whistling in these trees behind me, it's beautiful. The robin keeps visiting me, it's been on, sat on my rod twice. But that's what fishing these venues is all about, isn't it? I didn't realise actually how big those pinkies are, look at the difference there. These are the left ones are obviously older, these are fresh ones, but look at the size difference. So I've just switched places with them on the bait tray, so I'm going to kick off with just two of these because they're so big. They are coming round nicely go two nice bright fluoro pinkies what fish could resist them and I'll just pop a few freebies in the feeder let's get out there that sun is coming I'll make the most of that while it's here so we got a few pinkies in there I want some to come out on the way down so I'm not going to squeeze it too tight you know because we're just trying to draw one or two fish into the swim get the rod out and then it's time for some breakfast I think while we're waiting for the first bite really hard bottom out there as well that tip came back really really quickly which is good just get a nice angle in that tip in fact I can bring the tip round there and I've got a lovely lovely black black background see the tip against let's get that set nice old school feels very much old school this we're sat on the bank not waded out it's lovely just see that red tip now against that black background perfectly even better if we see it go around won't it
breakfast time. Just had my second bite of breakfast and I've just had a really fast knock, just like that. So I'm going to pop that down a second. That was, and again, that was a little twitch. That's great, first cast. Only a little indication. I'm fishing braid direct, so we should be able to see the indications quite easily. Just gonna leave it. it. Might be on, the fish might be on, I don't know. It's 75 centimeter up length. I haven't moved it or anything. Just leave it, see if it develops. That's really encouraging to get a sign first cast. It's saying that there's one or two fish out there already. Let's see if it's on. No. But very, very, very encouraging. Definite indications. Definite signs of fish. Let's see if the bait's marked. I'm not going to go daft with the bait, but obviously if we start catching fish and that, I can start putting more bait in. There we go. Yep, it's definitely being touched. One of the pinkies is flattened as you can see brilliant that's good really encouraging once we start getting bites we'll try putting some worm in and see if that changes what we're catching or affects the, the fishing i'm gonna put some corn in now this time some of that chopped corn i like to get some of that in because that's gonna be really really bright on the bottom you know it stands out on the bottom if them fish are at half depth or whatever just giving them something nice and bright to see we'll be trying to we put more feed in this time. There you go, look at that. Let's see what response we get. I'm not going to go daft with it. Some dark looking clouds coming over there. Hopefully it'll miss us. There we go. Now normally on these sessions, I don't normally put a keep net in. But I know some people may wonder why I've got one in today. Well, the reason why I've done that is because there are lots of pike in these places, in these reservoirs. There are generally quite a few pike and the reason why i like to put the net in is because if we are we do start catching fish you're going to be winding fish back and when you drop them back in the edge you can often find that pike get educated to that they're following the fish coming in and as you're putting the fish back they're laid just in the margin there just waiting for them and picking them off every time so it is actually it's giving the, the fish a better chance because at the end of the day if you have caught some fish even if the pike are following the fish in I've just had another indication there it means that when you release them at the end of the day, they're all released together and it gives them a better chance of, uh, of survival and not getting picked off. Just add another indication there. Second cast, which is brilliant. Let's have him. We've got one. Interesting to see what this is. We know there are lots of small skimmers in here, but lots of roach, lots of perch, and the odd better bream if you can get amongst them. have a look what this one is is it a skimmer it's a skimmer look at that brilliant how encouraging is that great species as well you know for coming up here and fishing for you know the chance of a bream catching the skimmers as well is, is great so that second cast you see there see what size they are they're perfect size for pike aren't they particularly them jack pike from to pick them off so so that's answered my first question already yes there are some fish on these pegs um, and you know and when you catch early like this it can be so encouraging you know regardless of what happens the rest of the day because you've obviously found an area where there are some fish because they're here straight away and uh, and it's also telling you that the line that you're on uh, is you know where there are some fish you know you're not worried that i'm a fishing too close too far out and all that so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a bit some more corn in again, as you can see, and a few pinkies. Just stay quite positive with it to start with, especially now we've had well, we've had two bites in the first two casts, haven't we? It'll be interesting to see what happens now, whether we continue catching them little skimmers or let's see if the roach move in, or who knows? Hopefully the pike will leave us alone. But they're really dark clouds over there. That's rain. Hopefully, I'm hoping that's going to miss us. But we are right on the Pennines here. That's the main road just behind them trees there is the main road to Manchester over the top over the Woodhead Pass. So we are very high, surrounded by moorlands. 
that after all that's why they build reservoirs in places like this isn't it <laughs> Another bite there straight away. It's only been out there. Let's have it. Yeah, another one. Well, that wasn't even out there a minute, was it? On two pinkies again. Let's see what this one is. Feels a little bit better. Might be another skimmer, this one, I think. That tree looks really ominous, though, doesn't it? For pike laying under there, laying in wait. Yeah, you can imagine that. Uh, one or two predators hanging around around there. Is it another skimmer? Let's net this one, a little bit bigger, I think. Let's see it. They're a lovely stamp of fish, aren't they? They're really, really nice. Yeah, fantastic. Be interesting how close you could catch these fish now. Now we've found some feeding, because that's my next, uh, my next mission for today, really. It would be nice to come up. I've got some pole fishing videos to do and some waggler fishing. And if those fish are going to come into shallower water or closer in, then it'd be beautiful fi fishing with a, a pole here, catching those fish. So yeah, so I'm going to keep going, keep doing what I'm doing, and we'll see if it gets better or worse, or whether we can just continue catching them all day. I've just had two casts without a bite, which I thought was a little bit odd. But I've just cast out there, and it's only been out there 30 seconds. I've had a really slow pull round. I've picked up nothing there. Look at that slime all around the braid look at that so that was obviously a liner possibly a bigger fish as well well this is next cast since that liner it's strange i had two or three casts without without a single sign i just thought that just as other fish had gone perhaps that there's a pike there is this a different species no that might have been a perch then, but... And then all of a sudden, I had that liner, and now we're back to getting bites again now. So maybe there are pike out there that are moving the fish around, but I haven't had one on. And what I've done is I've switched from double pinky now. I'm being quite aggressive with the feed, to be honest. I'm, I'm being staying positive. But I've just switched from, from double pinky onto double maggot now. And since I did that, that's when I've had the indications and getting bites again. So perhaps that's just because that bait is standing out a bit more. I don't know. With it being a bigger bait. As you can see, there's quite a bit of bait going in. They're not loads, but I'm staying positive with it. I'm sure that it'll get stronger the more I fish down that one hole. As we draw more, fi more and more fish in. That's what I'm hoping, anyway. If you are going to fish any sort of reservoir like this if you if you know where there is a spot where where there is bait going in all the time even if it's just one angler or two anglers if they're fishing the same pegs all the time then you know that's why those places are generally the best place to go to because that's where the fish are used to the bait going in <laughs> i actually turned away then the robin appeared on my landing net handle and i just turned around to uh, to feed it and i felt my rod go I'd got my hand on the rod at the time and I felt it banging and without even looking round, looking at the tip, I've just picked up out a reaction um, and look, I've reeled in, broken, so that would suggest that I've been bitten off, maybe I just had the first cast, that's the first time I've tried a white maggot and a red maggot and it's only been out there a minute and possibly, uh, I think it's fair to say that might have been a pike what's grabbed that or whether there was a fish on the hook and then a pike taking the fish well that's been out there two minutes i'm not actually timing the casts today like i would do normally but how about that well i'll let you read into that what you want to read into that i've been fishing for an hour and a half we've had a perch we've had mainly skimmers and that is first cast first cast i've just put worms in a big blob of worm as you've seen First cast with a blob of worm in and caught the first roach of the day. Is that coincidence or not?
Well, since putting that worm in, it's really slowed things down. It definitely hasn't got any better. It has got slower. One thing I have done though, I've just put a little bit of extra water into that ground bait, so it's not quite as dry. And I think if I was to switch to an open-ended, like a plastic open-ended feeder, I think that'll be, that would be better, I think. But it's been a really enjoyable two or three hours. I haven't really done that much fishing, but it's definitely been mission accomplished as regards finding some fish, some feeding fish that are in a nice comfortable range in stunning surroundings you know and it's been a really nice change of pace and a few hours away from that desk editing videos i really hope you've enjoyed me sharing this with you if you have please let me know by giving this one a thumbs up and please consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done already and i'm really looking forward to getting back up up here over the next few weeks where i'm going to be fishing some different methods for you so i hope you're going to enjoy those so thanks for watching and i look forward to seeing you next time